Red Bull's Dr. Helmut Marko says Sergio Perez's second place at Spa is the maximum anyone could achieve in the second RB19, with double F1 world champion Max Verstappen untouchable at the moment. Checo destroyed any hopes of a title campaign this year with six straight fight-back drives. But while he returned to form in Belgium, Marco, in a chat with the sports official podcast F1 Nation, says runner-up is all the team expects from him, with Verstappen very special. Being second behind uh, Max is like a win. You know, there won't be any other driver who could stay with him on one level. Maybe Alonso and Hamilton would be nearer, but nobody could beat him at the moment. Mercedes boss Toto Wolff has admitted Sir Lewis Hamilton's next contract won't include an ambassadorial component, given he still has many years to go as a driver with the Silver Squad. Hamilton's future has been one of the sport's hottest topics all year long, but while the delay was previously thought to be due to negotiations over his post-racing role, Wolff says that hasn't been spoken about. With the paperwork now with the lawyers and an announcement date therefore hard to predict given their own processes. It's simply down to trivial things that just need to be cleaned up in contracts, he said. Speculation though continues on whether Hamilton will get a raise. With the seven-time world champion reported to be currently on a cool 35 million US dollars a year, 20 million dollars less than Top Gun Max Verstappen, Ferrari Charles Leclerc is third on 24 million. Former Alpine boss Otmar Safnauer could soon be back in the paddock, with rumors ahead of the break that he could rejoin his former employer Ford as it prepares to partner with Red Bull. Alpine sacked Safnauer and longtime sporting director Alan Permain ahead of the Belgian Grand Prix, citing irreconcilable differences over its methods and timeline to success. But it's rumored the Romanian-born American is set to be snapped up by Red Bull-bound Ford, having run their US motorsport program before joining F1 with British American Racing in 1998. Not to go into the contractual stuff, but I've got to stay away from other teams for a year, but not Formula One in general, he said. It's not yet known where Permain will turn up, though his 34-year tenure at Enstone ensures he's super employable, with Red Bull boss Christian Horner confident he won't be out of work for long. F1's power brokers, both current and former, have lined up to put the boot into Alpine following its brutal management cull in Belgium, with ex-team boss Cyril Abitable stating its 100-race timeline for success in the sport was destined to fail from the start. Abitable joined Renault's F1 effort from 2014, first as managing director and additionally team boss from 2017 to early 2021, when the team was rebranded as Alpine and Laurent Rossi took over management as CEO with his 100 race plan to fight for wins and championships. But Abitable has questioned the need for a number in the first place. Aston Martin's colossal investments, Red Bull's incredible momentum, none of that is going to stop just because Laurent Rossi's 99th Grand Prix came along, he said. Red Bull is set to make a final decision on Alpha Tauri's 2024 rebrand in September, with the race said to be between current sponsor, Polish oil firm Orlen, and global fashion brand Hugo Boss. Red Bull's sister team is set to undergo significant change next season, with new management, sponsors, name, and main hub shift to the UK to be closer to its Bista wind tunnel. Orlan, partly owned by Saudi Arabian firm Aramco, joined Alpha Tauri this year from Alfa Romeo as a former Robert Kubica sponsor. While Aston Martin fashion partner Hugo Boss is looking at adding Red Bull's fashion brand Alpha Tauri to its portfolio. 
Stellantis Mark Alfa Romeo is set to join Haas from 2024 onwards, with a deal reportedly agreed for it to rebadge the squad's Ferrari power units and an announcement expected at the Italian Grand Prix. Alfa Romeo is currently with Sauber, which at first joined in 2018 and then rebranded the following year. But the partnership will conclude at the end of 2023, with the Swiss squad preparing for Audi's entrance. But Alfa Romeo is keen to continue in the sport, with Haas the logical fit given its Ferrari links and title sponsor MoneyGram's colors, and Monza the logical place to announce the deal, with initial talks rumored to have begun at the Monaco Grand Prix in May. Mercedes is keen to calm its W14 turned bucking Bronco, but hopes that it is short-term pain related to setup or the Spa circuit. Bouncing returned for a number of teams in Belgium, despite targeted technical regulation updates for this year. But the Silver Squad hopes that it wasn't triggered by recent upgrades. The question we need to ask ourselves is how much of it is just the circuit we're at in the Spa and how much is it to be found in setup? Because obviously it was a wet race weekend, a weekend where we had no dry running up until the point we were actually racing. We'll also take a really good look at the upgrade kit and make sure we've not introduced bouncing with that. Bouncing was a huge issue last season, with the phenomenon related to ground effect cars. But while it was a massive political issue in getting it dealt with for 2023, it's not something drivers can live with. It definitely affects the performance of the cars because it affects the driver's ability to extract the maximum grip from the car. It affects their balance and it affects their ability to get their braking points, etc. right. Young drivers will need more stamina than ever next season, with feeder series F2 and F3 releasing bumper calendars that build on 2023's efforts. The route to the pinnacle of motorsport has been simplified over recent years, with national F4 series leading to F3 and F2 that are on the official F1 weekends, ensuring more eyeballs on the talent. And those prospects will need to be on their A-game in 2024, with more races meaning more chances to win it or bin it. Both series join F1 for blast-off in Bahrain, with only F2 in Saudi Arabia before they rejoin in Australia. The pair are European mainstays, with F3 settled in Monza and F2 going all the way to Abu Dhabi. Formula One and the FIA are set to lock horns over new entries to the grid, with the governing body assessing its applications and the sport keen to retain the status quo of 10 teams. FIA President Mohammed Ben Salayam says he'd like to see an OEM squad from both the USA and China, with a decision expected from the first round of applications in September. But while Liberty Media CEO Greg Maffei has said an 11th team, one that added a lot of value, makes sense in the right circumstances, it wasn't without complications, with most teams against it, and four or five tracks lacking room for an extra garage. There was a process to add more teams, but the bar is very high, and it's unclear what value an 11th team would add. And there is a lot of uncertainty among the other teams about an 11th team, he said, in a recent call with Wall Street analysts. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.